Hey guys, so I'm a bit comfortable. I have my leg up in my chair and I wanted to come up here and talk about how I got to where I am right now after being fired. Let's go back to the beginning of when I was younger. I've always had the entrepreneur type of drive in me. My parents used to give me an allowance to teach me the, the power of a dollar. And I wasn't just getting allowance for nothing. I was getting an allowance to clean the bathroom, vacuum, do the dishes, and it was there to teach me that if you want something in life then you have to work for it if you want money then you have to work for it if you want a new toy then you need to work for it i also got paid to get good grades in school and a lot of parents use the mindset of well you don't get paid to do what you're supposed to do yeah you are you guys don't work or do anything for free a lot of us are money motivated it taught me a valuable lesson so i used to get like seven dollars to do that and when i wanted more as i got older i wanted more i wanted um that expensive barbie so i would work harder to get that barbie and as i got older into my teen years i wanted to go shopping with my friends so i would tell my mom hey can i wash your car for twenty dollars and she would like big with me she would be like oh i'll give you 15 and i'm like okay well then can i get an extra five or ten to weed the garden and she would do this back and forth with me and it created such a great work ethic for me i've always had this spirit of wanting to make money so i could go out and do what i wanted to do and when i was in when i was like 16 years old i think i wanted to go on a missions trip um, with the church that we started that we're going to go to Dominican Republic. So I created a cleaning company at 16 years old and I would go around my neighborhood and my family's houses and I would clean and people would pay me for it and I got enough money to go to Dominican Republic. This fueled my drive. I was like, wow, I love traveling. I want to be able to travel more when I get older. So in high school, I created an eBay business selling jewelry online and I made good money. I made $100 every week from going to the mall and buying uh, jewelry that was on sale and then putting it on eBay for $10. It really fueled it. I think I started at eight years old. I started getting an allowance and that just really fueled it. I used to make uh, beaded bracelets with my friends clean yards, do gardens, clean houses, clean cars, anything I could to get extra money, I would do it as a child in primary school. And my parents would let me go around the neighborhood and ring doorbells to do that as well. They were very supportive of me working to get what I wanted and they really instilled that in me. So I had like three jobs when I was like 19 years old. Loved every minute of it and I was going to school. So I never had a problem getting a job. I was very social, outspoken, um, vibrant, talkative. So I never had a problem. I had transitioned to TJ Maxx um, in my high school in my college years i was about 20 years old or something tj maxx is where my whole entire mind frame started to come through and it changed my life i found out about the buyers program for tj maxx which means that people could go through an internship through college or right after college and be trained to be a buyer for them now if you guys if you guys go to tj maxx you know that they have a lot of items from different countries and there were buyers who got paid to travel to go to those places to get those items and bring them back for all of the TJ Maxx's that you see. And I was like, oh my God, I want this. This is what I went to school for so that I could get paid to shop for someone else in a different country. Honestly, my mom picked my major in college because I actually didn't want to finish college. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with you guys in your 20s. It is okay. If you don't know what you want to do directly out of high school, that is fine. You have 80 plus years to live still. You do not need to have it figured out right now. Stop, stop thinking that you do. And plus, who wants to spend 80 years doing the same thing for the rest of their lives? You're probably going to change your mind anyway. So don't stress it. And I wasn't, but my mom was pressuring me. Um, to go to college and you know follow in their footsteps and I just didn't feel like I needed or wanted to so she picked my major she found something I love which was fashion and shopping and she was like well you can go to college for that and I was like okay and I did it I I did the major that she picked out for me so this aligned with what I love to do which was shop and travel <laughs> so my my whole entire plan revolved around TJ Maxx it was all right, work here as an employee, become a manager. Right when I graduate from college, I'm gonna do the internship in Boston. I had it all planned out what I was gonna do. 
And my mindset changed when I was now dating my then boyfriend, now fiance. And I saw the mother of his son. Well, I didn't see her. She called one day. She had said that she had gotten a new job. And it was a job that allowed her to work from home so she could be with her daughter. And she was like, I'm making $20,000 more. And I was so happy for her. But something struck in my mind. It was, do I really want to stay at TJ Maxx for the rest of my life? Managers had told me that when you become a manager, your life kind of ends. Like, you're always here. TJ Maxx is open on holidays. I didn't know if I wanted to do that. And I was thinking, what if I didn't get into the buyer's program? Do I really want to be stuck here? But my thought process had changed, you guys. And I tell you guys all the time, when you change your way of thinking, your thought process from positive to negative or negative to positive, you will see a shift in your life, whether for the good or for the bad, but it's going to propel you into your next door. My mindset had changed from being this determined young lady, knowing exactly how my life was going to turn out and what I was going for to more of, I don't know if I wanna do this. I don't know if I'm happy. Can I be happy here? I was questioning myself. There was no longer any like overly positive thoughts about where I was in my life at that time. And one day I walked in to work like usual and I got called to the back. Now someone had come up to me saying that they had fired a few people and I was like, oh no, why are they firing people? And they were like, we don't know why they're firing people. I go in there and they start questioning me about management and the rules of how we do things. And I'm a very like take responsibility for yourself person. I knew I hadn't been doing things by the book like I should have been. Management had let us get away with doing certain things to make the line go by quicker when people were ringing out and we weren't following it by the book because of that. And we got fired for it, including me, including a lot of other people. I took responsibility for it because even though management had let us do that, it was fine. They told us to do it. It was under our numbers and we put it in and did it. We were just following what the managers told us. So yes, the managers could be totally blanked and the managers did not get fired. None of them got fired because of this. However, I'm not in the business have I or have I ever been, I think someone else should be fired over me. I did it. I took personal responsibility. I did, wasn't going by the book and I took it like a champ. At first, when I was sitting down in the chair, I was super scared because I was like, oh God, how is this going to turn out for me? I had already in my mind made it up that I don't know if I want to do this for the rest of my life anymore. So when I walked out of those doors at 20 something years old, I walked out with a smile. Most people would be scared. What am I going to do? I don't have a job. And at this point, I did not have a backup job anymore, you guys. TJ Maxx was the last stop for me in my whole hustle thing. I did want to be an entrepreneur. I did have other aspirations, but I had a clear path for so many years while I was in college that I didn't feel the need to. When they let me go, it felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I walked out with a smile on my face. It was like a sigh of relief. I had accepted my consequence. My brain went off like a light bulb. I wanted to become a teacher. I, when I was younger, I always actually wanted to be a teacher. Um, I used to place school with, with, with invisible um, kids and with my teddy bears and stuff and I would give them tests and stuff. And that's what I do now. I teach you guys how to be what I am right now. So everything works out. The universe has a plan for you. So I think that it's a full circle moment. However, I said I wanted to be a teacher. I had a friend who told me that she does substitute teaching um, on the side and that it pays her like $80 a day to do it. And I was like, that sounds good enough. Online English teaching popped up. I didn't have the qualifications to teach online, to, to teach English online at all. Didn't have the qualifications. You needed a bachelor's degree. You needed um, two years of experience. So I was like, what can it hurt for me to apply? The worst they can say is no. The least they can say is nothing. Okay. Like, I had nothing to lose. I was like just applying to all the teacher jobs and the in the um, substitute teacher license and stuff. I was writing it all down. So the day that I got fired, the day that I got fired, I was putting in applications to be an online teacher, even though I didn't qualify for it. And I was putting in applications to teach ESL to students in Asia, primarily Japan, China, 
in Taiwan. Three days after I had put in my application, I was hired. It said that I needed to have um, an ESL certificate that I know how to teach online. I took that course in like 12 hours. I sat down all day taking that course so that I could get my license in, in time to have at least the bare minimum of the qualification. The other qualification was that I needed a bachelor's degree. I actually didn't get done with school until two years after I was hired. In the midst of all of this, you guys, I have not named every single thing that I've done, but my mom did teach me to be a signing agent years before all of this. And that was one of the side hustles that I had been doing along with cleaning houses, cleaning cars and all that. I was also doing signing agent work on the side. But it gave me anxiety. I hated doing it because I did not understand completely what I was doing. I talked to myself out of it. Your mind is your biggest enemy if you are not using it correctly and I kept talking myself out of it and my mom would keep telling me she was like Jazz they're offering you $85 for this document the person lives down the street go do it she would like try to push me and I would talk myself out of it because I was scared I didn't think I was good enough for it my mind was my enemy so I did it here and there, but eventually I just quit altogether. And my mom kept trying to push me to do it because she told me if all else fails in your life, at least you'll have this as a backup plan. And I did, and she was right, but it was never the first thing that I wanted to do. So I got hired to work online as an ESL teacher, making more money at once than I had ever made before from one thing. And I traveled the world, not the world, but I traveled to places that I never thought I would get to with my then boyfriend. I was living my dream. I was living my dream. However, the amount of work I had to put in for it was tiring. I was waking up at 3 a.m. every single day and then I would get done around 12 p.m., 1.30 p.m. at the latest teaching students. So my 3 a.m. was their 3 p.m. So this is when the students were getting off from their school to come online to teach, to learn English. It was tiring. I'm making good money. I'm making more money, but now I have all this time on my hand. I wasn't doing anything but waiting for my fiance to come back home um, after he got off work and I had already gotten off work five hours before. So he told me, you're slacking. All you're doing is sitting at home now. You're not doing anything else. I'm like, bro, I just work 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. But he had a he had a point. I was no longer pushing myself. He was like the girl that I met when you were first working at TJ Maxx. Um, you were, you were determined. You were very determined. You had your life planned out. You wanted to create a fashion business, an online business. And where's that girl at now? He had a point. I had grown comfortable. So I decided to make my vending machine business and it grew from there with with YouTube and then I started to really really focus in on my signing agent I was like all right I've done it off and on for a few years I'm ready to really really apply myself just to make sure that I don't mess up so I had been going on and off with it I was making so much money to the point where you guys know that my goal was to make a hundred thousand dollars a year and I am there so I can honestly say I am not a part of the group on YouTube where they, they do the whole I don't dream of labor, I don't have a dream job. I have always been a hard worker. I've always had a positive mindset and I, well when I didn't, when I was younger I had a childhood that I don't really like to talk about but I told myself I would never be that negative person again. Nothing good came from out of me being negative when I was a young kid going through what I was. I began to have that negative mindset at TJ Maxx, which I do believe 100% led me to getting fired. I had my whole life panned out for me. Everything was panned out once I graduated and, and, and I believed in myself. I had confidence in what I was doing because I've never failed before and I failed. But I think because my mindset had changed from I'm doing this, I'm gonna do this, it's gonna happen, I'm getting the internship, this is happening, to me questioning if I even wanted it to happen. The door that was supposed to close on my own free will, I didn't close it, and it was closed for me. I was literally pushed into doing what I was so always meant to be, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have quit. Destiny, however, whatever it's called, was like, if you're not gonna do it for yourself, we're gonna do it for you, and I was fired. And I 
and I'm a big believer on why I am where I am today is because of that. So it could have been the end of the world for me. I could have been wallowing in depression because of that. No money, no idea what I was going to do. I thought of it on the spot <laughs> the day that I got fired, that I was just going to become a teacher. And I got hired. I didn't have not have the qualifications. So all of that to tell you guys is that when one door closes and you think it's the end of the world, it is not. It's not. So if you want to quit your job and you want to take inspiration from what anybody else is doing to make money or at least try something new for yourself, I'm not going to be an advocate and tell you to quit. But if you really, really believe in yourself and you really do have a kick-ass plan or at least a little inkling of an idea what you want to do, then go for it. You have years. Most of you people who are watching me right now, you're probably in your 20s, 30s, I'll maybe even say 40s, but you're probably younger than that. You have 40 to 80 more years to live. You do not need to do the same thing over and over and over again for the rest of your life. I am, I have a vending machine business. I have a signing agent business. I teach you guys how to be signing agents so that you can make $100,000. I am now starting to be an Airbnb host. I have YouTube. I have my my planners and journals that I make that I 100% contribute to my mindset being better. When you change your mindset and you believe in yourself, you can literally do anything. I want to start a perfume business. You can do it. You do not need to do one thing for the rest of your life. And even if you have a nine to five that you, you're not going to leave because you have two kids at home and they depend on you, fine. But fund your money into something that you will be passionate about. If you want to write a book, take the money that you're making from your nine to five and put it into writing your book, getting it published, getting it hardback, softback. You can do that. I did it. You just got to change your mindset. The people who really actually fail in life are the people who fail to begin. I don't know if that inspired you. I really wanted to get this off of my chest. I'm, I'm blessed. Maybe I'm lucky, but I believe in what I say when I say if you really really believe in it and you're willing to work at it whether it be on the side at nighttime you can do it you just got to tell yourself and believe yourself that you can stop making fear keep you from doing what you want to do it's a really big weight off my shoulders so thanks so much you guys you're really a very powerful being but you don't realize when you come to earth you forget all of that and we have access to this part all the time but we ignore it all the information I've written about, it comes through my clients, it doesn't come through me. One of the main lessons you come to earth to learn is how to manipulate energy. Everything is energy. And you come to earth to learn how to manipulate that, to be a master manifester. So once you learn how to manipulate energy, you can have anything you want. Nothing is impossible. There are no limitations, except the limitations you put upon yourself.